Hey folks, this is Jeff with This Week with JTT. I'm reacting to a video from The Dairy Woman Speaks. And one of the things they're going to talk about is why women get pissed over a mandatory paternity test. That means that they're going to get busted. I can guarantee you all the money they get from their ex and all that, because they have a baby with another dude, but have their man, husband, or ex fake as theirs. Yeah, that's not cool. So let's check it out. How is that? over 10 years. Okay, congrats. And I have been sleeping with my husband's cousin. Okay, number one, she been sleeping with her husband's cousin. Keep listening. Oh. For a little, well, we've known each other for a long time before I met my husband. So she knew the cousin before she met the husband, but keep listening. And I didn't know that was his cousin. And I got a kid by him. Wow. So whose kid does your husband think it is? His. Let me guess. She had no desire to tell him that. This is why we need mandatory paternity tests. I'm going to keep saying that term over and over again until somebody gets sick of it. Now all I'm going to say is deal with it. He think it's his baby. Oh, my he God. He don't know it's his cousin. Um, if you are married, like for instance, my husband and I are married, and I was to get pregnant by another man, um, he would be responsible for the child support for 18 years, even though it's not his child, because we're married. That's the way the courts work. Uh, can we get, I don't know what state it is, but I think it's stupid. So you mean to tell me if a woman's married, got knocked up by another man, the husband's responsible for the kid? Uh-uh, no. Mm-mm. I'm sorry. Any man worth his salt was said, no way, go to domestic relations no matter what state, and fight like crazy. As long as the guy didn't sign the birth certificate, it should not be an issue. And the only way he'd be screwed unless the wife lied to him like the other woman did and signed a birth certificate thinking it's his kid. We need mandatory paternity tests. That's like you wouldn't want like abortion, free abortion across the board in the United States, men should get mandatory paternity tests. Next. So um, you may owe the entirety of all that child support back. And if you cannot pay it back, you are going straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. <laughs> if I'm correct, this happened in Tennessee. And maternity fraud is a real deal. And women are going to go to jail. And here's the thing. It's done in Tennessee. You're going to tell me that other states ain't going to want that? Uh-uh. Other men say, want timeout. Tennessee wants, got that? I want that. I guarantee it's going to be Tennessee. It's going to be all the South. It'll be Louisiana. It's going to be Alabama. It's going to be Florida. <laughs> I know Texas probably want it on it. And next thing you know, everybody else up north going to want it too. It's going to spread to the West Coast. All the men who get screwed in child support payments, they want a paternity test. Period. Ladies are now being held accountable for their actions. Oh my goodness. Women being held accountable? That's their kryptonite. Accountability is not one of strong suits. Sorry, ladies. So I'm kicking my husband out after he asked for a DNA test on my baby. <laughs> um, lady, if you didn't cheat on him or had another baby on him, why are you worried? The paternity test is going to do one or two things. Is it going to A, exonerate you, or two, convict you? Simple as that. Here goes here go the last of your stuff. Don't come back. Thinking about my decision. Oh, this one I don't like. This one about this woman saying like how paternity test is, should not be mandatory. Yes, it should be mandatory. If you want mandatory abortions across the board, whether they want it, there should be mandatory paternity test. I don't think, I'm not going to say abortion is going to be mandatory. It's like a woman want an abortion anytime she wants in any, all 50 states. Men should have a paternity test in all 50 states. No questions asked. Decision to deny my daughter's father the right to prove the paternity of our child. I'm convinced I made the right decision at that time. By lying to your daughter about who the father is? Mother of the year. My dignity was being questioned when he asked for a DNA test. Like I said before, 
The DNA test is either going to exonerate you or convict you. Get it? He mentioned this during my pregnancy, and it didn't go well with me. We became distant after I returned home to my parents from the hospital. We lived in different states, and he didn't visit me because he was afraid of what my dad might do to him. Or so I thought. My dad had already threatened him to leave me alone, that I was too young to have a boyfriend, but he insisted and said he loved me and would do whatever it took to marry me. So let me guess, this is about like a very young couple, maybe like early 20s, maybe like late teens. Interesting. I was young, but I was no fool. I knew he wanted to get into my pants and all I wanted was to have a boyfriend and a rich one too. Little did I know that life had other plans for me. Eight months into our relationship, I had an accident. My life was hanging by a thread and he was there for me. Every weekend when he wasn't working, he would travel five hours back and forth to be with me at the hospital. That sounds like love and commitment. If you're willing to travel five hours about like every so often, five hours, that's a long... That's equivalent to me traveling like from Johnstown to New York. That's a long distance. That's love and commitment. He cared and he showed me that. I wouldn't say I was in love, but I loved him. And I knew if I was to spend the rest of my life with someone, he was that man. I was loyal, honest, and committed to him. He knew it, but he wasn't loyal to me. I knew he had other girlfriends. So the guy was a player. Lady, I think you should really be careful with your choices. I had confronted him once and he denied it. I didn't... Like Shaggy, it wasn't me. I didn't care if he had other girls. At this time, I wasn't thinking about marriage because he was unfaithful. My intention was to date him and see if he would change. Unfortunately, I found out I was pregnant shortly after. I was devastated. Fun question, who did the baby belong to? Neither of us was ready to be parents, and I had my health issues to worry about. However, my gynecologist said an abortion would put my life in more danger and hinder any possibility of recovering. My options were, if I survive the abortion, I may never walk again. And if I was fortunate to walk again, I may never have another child. It was a difficult decision. After several conversations... Two words, birth control. I sound, I'm doing me to sound like a jerk, ladies, but two words, birth control. And there's at least close, there's quite a few methods of birth control. That's all I'm going to say, birth control. He convinced me to look at the bigger picture. If I didn't have another child, at least I would have this one. So we both decided to keep the child. At first... I didn't care if I died doing the abortion because the chances of my recovery were slim. On the other hand, my ex was concerned about the consequences my death would bring to him if the abortion failed. He said that a child wouldn't be that bad and he would be there all the way. When my dad heard I was pregnant, he disowned me. Ooh, that sucks. I'll lose the support of family, that's hard. He called my ex and told him to take me and that he didn't want to see me in his house. This was when my ex questioned my dignity for the first time. He asked my father how sir was he that the child was his. In my culture, single mothers are humiliated and called sluts. Most times, the girl's parents will force the man to marry the girl to avoid bringing shame to the family. A.K.A. Shotgun Weddings. <laughs> I bet that that's well, I think I heard the stories is more well known in the South, Shotgun Weddings, for a reason. Or they will disown her. When my mother told me about my dad's conversation with my ex, I was heartbroken. For a man who said he wanted to marry me, I didn't think he should feel threatened to be a father or husband, for that matter. I wasn't even thinking about marriage after I learned I may be wheelchair-bound for life. Still, I needed him to prove his words by supporting me. If anyone was to doubt me, it shouldn't have been him. I asked him about what he said to my dad, and he denied it. 
I knew he was lying, and I wasn't going to allow him to humiliate me by insinuating that I was a whore. I was very sure I wasn't a two-timing bitch he assumed I was. Also, maybe he wasn't ready to be a father and wanted to get off the hook. I'll put it this way, though. That man was no say himself. But then again, she chose to deal with this guy at that level. Now, one thing I feel bad for, a child is conceived during the worst time. The biggest, like, person who suffers the most always have been the kids. You know, that's why if you're going to um, be in a relationship with somebody, think carefully. And ladies especially, use protection. Seriously, use protection. It's like, you kind of sense you're going to be a single mom one way or the other, but at least use protection. Be smart. Either way, I needed to know how he saw me, what he actually thought of me behind the soothing words and smooches. So I asked him if he wanted DNA done to prove he was the father of the child I was carrying. He stuttered in between words that it wouldn't be a bad idea, but said it wasn't necessary since he knew we had unprotected sex the week I had the accident. Question is, was he the only one she had unprotected sex with? My dad managed to change his mind and asked me to return home after he got several lectures from my gynecologist and his friend, a reverend father. I returned home broken. I was in a wheelchair, completely dependent on my parents and siblings. Okay, that's rough. I mean, I like in some sense, like, I question like her decision on it, but being wheelchair bound, like, then she was in a horrible accident. So yeah, you gotta feel some feel bad for her. Pregnancy made me more depressed. I even attempted suicide several times. This was the time I needed my ex to be there for me. Instead, he became distant. He would make up silly excuses as to why he couldn't visit. Boy, that changed quickly. That changed quickly. I didn't see him for six months all through my pregnancy until three days after I gave birth. So he missed out seeing the birth of a child. Unreal. While he was carrying our daughter, I could see the many questions flooding his head. I looked him straight in the eyes and I said, if you ever do a DNA test on our daughter, I will make sure you never see her again and she will never know you as her father. He was shocked, but I meant every word. My dignity was all I had left and I wanted to protect it at all cost. We were living in Nigeria and since we weren't married, it would- A black couple. Okay. But um, bottom line, though, is the child really his? That's the question. Ladies, why you have a hard time letting the man find out the truth? Why? It's one thing he say, okay, child's not mine. I still raise it. That's his choice. How come you get to have all the choices and the men don't? I'm not saying the guy was good for treating her badly after the accident. He's in the wrong for that. But in fact, he questions the deed, um, the paternity of the child. I think he has the right to know, especially if things are so strained between those two. It would have been difficult for him to fight for paternity rights in our home country. It's easy to say, if you have nothing to hide, why not do the test? Thank you. My words exactly. However, it was very difficult for me to accept that my loyalty was being questioned. This is why when I hear women refuse to go for DNA tests... To prove the child's paternity, I understand, because it subjects the woman to a lot of scrutiny by a man she had given her world. And knowing he doesn't feel the same way is like a death sentence. And these days... Okay, here's the thing, though. It goes, once again, you gotta be careful of the men you pick. Simple as that. In terms like... <sighs> I must have said it over and over again, like men, women should choose better because for some kind of reason, flip the script, women could say like, men do better, choose better. Guess what? Back to you ladies. You do better, you choose better, but you don't want to hear it. You look just like, oh, you're a bunch of misogynistic pigs. So you could tell us to do better and choose better, but we're not allowed to tell you that. But yet you have the woman's intuition we're supposed to be shopping with our instincts. You're supposed to be wiser than us, but somehow you pick the worst males. Then you expect to find the first good man to handle your, your situation. 
men put drugs in pretty girls' drinks and things happen. People don't. That's also true, too, unfortunately. That's why I strongly recommend any woman, <laughs> don't go alone. If, you go, if your sister go to a club, don't go alone. Go with a friend who watch your back. Because guys had zero problem putting drugs in your drink to have their way with you. It's pretty scary. Remember sometimes? I remember perfectly. Far more vividly than I care to. Just a simple blood test. No. I personally pay taxes. And I care about where my money goes. I'm not here to pay for so-and-so because there's a confusion about who's the father. That's Confusion? No, 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 no. More like... The mother knows who the father might be, and the father has no clue whether it's his kid or not. And I don't know if he's going, well, my bad, but when I see this woman talk to, this one woman in particular talk to this trash, it gets me mad. It gets me really upset because she says, like, she don't care about how the man would feel. She don't care, shockingly. It's not my business. Handle your, your personal shit. And for me, I want to fund schools. I want Go to politics. I want to fund the MTA because the. Get a car. Move in the suburbs. Trains are never on time. We, we got bigger problems. We and men don't sit down. We have bigger problems. I'm sorry. I'm not. You're not sorry, so shut up. Paying for no mandatory tax. I don't think there's any issue with a man taking care of another man's child. You want to bet? That's a slap in the face. You're going to tell me it's not the bigger deal? A man wants a child from his own Lloyds. Why? It's one thing if you want, you know for a fact that a child is from you, but the fact that you don't, that the man don't know it's from him, that has to hurt. That has to hurt. But do that add to the reason why men do not want to be involved with women? In this country, especially in Western civilization, because these women don't care. They don't care how much it affects the man, especially if he wants to be a father. Women do it all the time, whether you know or not. He might bring another child and say, oh, I had, I, I had this out of our wedlock, you know, what are we going to do? Or he's taking your money and, and paying child support to another family. You had no idea. So when we're... The we live in an evil world. I'm sorry. I mean, like, I think of the good man who, as a kid, got good grades, study hard, go either to a college or to a vocational school, studies hard there, works, build himself up to where he could be a man making decent money, maybe high-end blue-collar worker, or a man making six figures or more, and the best you can give him is a woman that has a certain body count with X amount of kids and all that stuff. And you expect him to just accept it and shut up. I beg to differ. Just like jumping like, oh, oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Hold on. It's already being done. I think DNA testing should be mandatory at birth, right then and there. Not only is it very much foul to have somebody thinking that they are the father of a child and they are not. I don't care how y'all put that. I don't care what excuse y'all make. That's foul. But that's not the only reason I say that. These hospitals be mixing people babies up. So... You might not, he might not be the daddy. That's true. I don't know how often it happens though. You could tell me like any horror stories about baby mix-ups. I want to hear. I mean like, and number two, how much did the hospital got sued for it? That is, wow. That's another reason you need a paternity test, a paternity test in case stuff like that happens. But you might not be the mama either, so... I think for to save people 18 years of dealing with a foul baby mama, because usually women that do that be foul, you're going to get this man in hell knowing it ain't his baby. It should just be a DNA test right there, right in there when a baby is born. Now in my... I agree. I agree. She's one of the few intelligent women. God bless her heart. Late 30s, my perception of paternity tests have changed. I see a lot of paternity fraud and injustice against men, and I believe mandatory DNA is necessary to protect men and the children. If my ex wants a paternity test done on our daughter, who is 19, by the way, I will let him. Although it wouldn't make any difference since I had been loyal to him, with or without the test, I know he's the father regardless of the resemblance and many of his habits my daughter inherited from him. But now... I feel more at ease knowing what he thinks of me doesn't matter. 
In any case, I will advise men to get a DNA test on their children without the mom knowing. If the mother has given you a reason to question her trust and loyalty in the relationship, because most honest and loyal women do not take their integrity lightly, and we feel insulted when you question our values. If my ex had done the paternity test without my consent, I wouldn't have known he had doubted my loyalty, and I wouldn't have lost my respect for him. But he would be at peace knowing he is the father of the child and be reassured of my values. And what's so terrible about that? Men want peace in their life, not chaos, not disorder. For some reason, men are not allowed to even have that even. We women act out of selfishness when we refuse to do a DNA test on the child. I've seen a clip that is said that women may feel like their rights are being compromised because they're trying to come out with something where men have the right to get a DNA test as soon as the child is born. Hmm. <laughs> so there's a problem with a man want to find out if that's his kid he's helped raising and not somebody else's kid. There's a problem with that. Hmm. But what I'm trying to understand is how is the women's rights being compromised when as soon as the baby start crying, you filing for child support. How is your rights being compromised when you're requiring them to care for this child? Like, I, I'm not, it's not making sense to me. The only people that um, would have a problem with this is these women, okay? And quite frankly, I feel like men should have a DNA. It should be automatic. It should be a law, okay? I think we should start seeing this test as proof of our dignity rather than an attack on it especially when a lot of dubious women are out there sending innocent men to jail whom they know aren't the fathers of the children. That's it for today. Fact. There's some men who are being sent to prison for lack of child support. Their lives are being ruined. Period. Because there's some dubious women who are less than dishonest. So... It took a while, folks, but what's your thoughts and opinions of this whole thing? It's a bit long, but what's your thoughts on it, though? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Peace.